So I think Steven's the only one in this group that has not been to Comic-Con. Um, <laughs> so what do those laughs mean? Is there advice that you can give him? Mm. Breathe. Just, just don't laugh at Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy. <laughs> like, <Yeah. no. laughs> do you have any personal space issues? <laughs> Well, I, I wasn't nervous about Comic-Con, except as it gets closer, everyone keeps telling me that it's just, they're like, get ready. Like, for what? It like, is a big deal. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty overwhelming. Yeah. It's, it's also, though, like, it's the most engaged audience you're ever going to come across in your life, mm -hmm. truly. Okay. Because educated, too. Educate, yeah, like, passionate. Like great questions. And... In an odd way, because your show hasn't come on the air yet, yeah. I think... You... We're screening the entire thing before our panel. Mm -hmm. It's going to be exciting. But even, mm -hmm. like, like you're, I mean, all of, I'm certainly on Fringe, I experience this. I mean, they digest these shows mm -hmm. and live them in a way that I've never come across before. So next year, when you go back, mm -hmm. it'll be a different experience. But it's also just full on, I mean... All sorts of awkward looking babies get made that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> With capes. Yeah. I think you like live in a bubble when you're doing your show. Yeah. So then when you're in front of thousands of people that actually watch and support it, it gives you like new energy to go back to work the next it's day. It's so validating. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. I mean, it can be fun because as, as everyone says, it's like they're big fans of yours or they know your history or they want to kind of get engaged with what you're doing and they're very well versed yeah. in you know and if they're not they want to be yeah. and they ask great questions yeah totally because we're, to be we're getting it from yeah. a couple of ways too because we have the comic book audience but we also have archery enthusiasts wow. Oh, wow. and they're <laughs> equally intense yes yeah don't have bad form That's awesome. they all hate orlando blue that's awesome. Like they're all really mad at him. They call they call bad archery legolosing. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah, I'm That's sure you'll awesome. learn some vocabulary, some new vocabulary while you're out there as well. Yeah. My advice would be, especially because your show has not yet come out, mm -hmm. to app, like take an hour, take two hours, and walk around the convention center. Like Morning. amongst the fans, and okay. don't take a security guard because they'll tell you that you must have a bodyguard. The thing is, that's what draws attention. Right. Like last uh, year when we okay. were with bodyguards, that's when in our show had not yet come out, but but you know there were the sort of built-in fans because I'm on a fairy tale show, mm -hmm. and having the security guards is what drew the attention. You wear a mask too. If, not say, have, have any of you done the mask thing? Be Darth Vader. The, uh, Everybody else is in a mask, so you might yeah, as well. Yeah, you might as well. That would be kind of awesome. Yeah. If I see a, a, a buff green arrow walking around Comic Con, I'm gonna know it's you. <laughs> You're a hooded. <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to I'm trying to get them. I want to uh, the suit. The suit jacket is just like a leather jacket. So I'm trying to convince them to just let me wear it for the panel or something like that. You just wear it around a little bit. You, there's no, there's no bridge too geeky. Like you I'm can't. excited yeah. because I'm. I, there's no fashion faux pas. There, you I cannot. I did read. Except I, for the guys dressed like oh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> I read comics a little bit growing up, but the the cool thing for me is that my sister is getting married on July 6th, and she's in Mexico. She's spending a couple extra days there, and then she and her husband. He is the biggest comic book fan that I know, and they're starting their honeymoon at Comic Con. Oh, oh my wow. lord! With me, he's never been. That's crazy. So that's the exciting <laughs> for me. We'll walk around. We'll walk around with him. Yeah. 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 He's gonna freak out. <laughs> On that note, and it, it could be Comic Con or elsewhere. What's the strangest or most interesting fan interaction that you guys have had? We shoot in Long Beach a lot, so in the same places. So a lot of the, a lot of the same people come out all the time and get braver and braver. And it hasn't happened to me, but it's happened to Michael where people will come up and say, well, you act like you're stabbing me and they'll pull out a kitchen knife no, or they'll pull out oh like gosh. chainsaws and hammers and crazy things and ask him to sign those things. But I don't think I any of us can beat that there. story. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> right now. That's amazing. Yeah, will you kill me? I get asked, people ask me to cuss at them a lot. Really? Yeah. And do you? Sometimes, <laughs> depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. I'm doing this for free. This is fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I get everything from like socks because Booth wears socks, like right. crazy socks. So they all want like they give me socks. I get like I walk away with like tons of socks. That's all so different striped cool. socks and crazy socks. I'll take some sort of a kitchen. Some of them want to <laughs> just take off their socks and give me their own socks, which yeah, is kind of a little cool. strange. Mm. You should yeah. talk to the writers and ask them to let you your character wear Rolexes and people yeah. like take it. That'd, nice. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? That's a good move. I should do that. I mean, I don't know. I think they're all. I mean, coming from a cult show and a cult environment. I've gotten everything from like, can you bite me? You know, being a vampire, can I hear some plastic teeth? I mean, I get like strange kind of requests. I mean, I remember being in Comic-Con in 99 when like first started and it was a small venue. And it was bizarre to see these 
all these interesting fans and people come out and really support you, but there were some that were just a little too into it, you know? I mean, I think you just kind of take them for what they are and kind of just keep a safe distance. I've always been afraid like someone's gonna attack you, you know, like jump through the crowd or- yeah, like, Nobody you know. wants to be the guy who gets stabbed no, at Comic-Con. No, they Comic -Con. don't. <laughs> like, I'm so oh, happy to be on a Disney, Disney show excited. right now. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, actually, there was a guy in our panel uh, somebody stabbed somebody with a bic. No. Because they people that. people sit for no. hours and hours and hours and hours and hours waiting on these seats, and they they basically squat right. They'll sit through four or five panels they don't want to watch, and just to get to the one that they do. And in our hall, somebody got stabbed with a bic. I don't know if because they were waiting on Fringe or something after us. A but big was, pen. Yeah, we were behind. The, and they're like, you can't go out now. There's been an incident. We're like, what's the incident? Like stabbing by bic. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, they had to drag them out, shut the hall down. So don't be that guy. <laughs> you're you not going to sleep between now and Comic Con. Like, presents or objects, and you're kind of like, yeah, Ruh -ruh. we don't know what exactly that is, and it's you know it can be anything, candles or yeah. like the baby thing. I always find it a little bit weird too. Like here, hold my infant. I'm like oh, that's not a good idea at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, Someone sent me two knives to my house too, and how they got my oh, my address, God. I don't know, but two really big knives, a sailor. I wrote him a letter and said thanks for your service, but I'm not going to sign the knives. And please don't. Oh, send and this is not really my address. They're nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to put them back in the, back in the mail. Time. I don't know what the rules are there. Oh, yeah, How about you, Lucy? Have you had an interesting fan interaction? Um, I've had some interesting <laughs> incidents where people have requested um, physical violence against them by me, um, which they wow. seemingly would enjoy a great deal that I um, did not um, <laughs> make myself available to. Um, a lot of times at interviews, they'll ask me to like spank them and do things to them. What is that from? Like, and it's on cameras. Um, I think it's just from a lot of, you know, a collection of, you know, from payback all the way through, um, you know, a lot of the action movies that I've done and, um, Sort of, they connect. They connect me with that, yeah, with that dominatrixy um, vibe. And um, I've had some people say that they named their child after me, their babies, like Lucy Lou, which is like this is an interesting name for a baby when you know there are different. <laughs> it's yeah. you know you don't really Lucy know what Lou to Smith. Nice Lucy to meet you. Lou, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny because. Um, you know, we're just doing our jobs and we're having a good time at it or trying to make it interesting and um, people really, it really, it sends something special to them and they sort of connect to it and then they make it into something a lot deeper that can, for, for a lot of other people can be a little bit scary and, you know, it's just weird because it's alarming when you go to an, an interview and somebody asks you to like spank them or to you yeah. smack them. I don't know, it's just too much, you know? Yeah. I've gotten tattoos. They come up and like forearms. Their whole yeah. back is like me tattooed on the back. No. No, wow, it's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, you kind of look at it and you're like, really? <laughs> that's a big choice right there. It's like very heavy. It's well, there's that famous Saturday Night Live skit with William Shatner where he's you know says to the Star Trek fans, "Get a life." Have you ever thought about like not in a, that public of a setting, but have you ever thought about sort of like shaking up? some of these super fans and being like, listen, man, you know, gotta go easy on this. No, I, I haven't. I mean, I, I think it's, as long as they're responsible and having yeah. a good time. Yeah. I mean, for them, it's, it's really a fantasy world. And like you were saying, they're so invested in your character that they take it to a degree of playing their own world in their house or wherever they may do that. And as long as they're responsible and they're not hurting anyone, then, I'm, yeah. I would never like tell them to stop. I think it's awesome that, you know, that everybody has a thing. In fact, I, even though Comic-Con's so big now, one of the things that I think is so cool about the Comic-Con experience is it gives a, a uh, an outlet for, mm -hmm. you know, when we were all growing up, if you were a comic book fan or a sci-fi nerd or, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, that was all in the basement. Like, you, like nobody ever <laughs> talked about that because it wasn't cool, but this gives a, an avenue, a venue for them to not only meet like-minded people, but just to completely express themselves in any way that they want. And it runs the gamut from, like, bad spandex to mm -hmm. the most, like, minute knowledge of really, really random bits of trivia from TV shows or games or whatever it is. I think that's kind of awesome. I mean, I, nobody's ever asked me to spank them in an interview, <laughs> so that's less you awesome. Know. You've got time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've got time. I have something to look up to, something <laughs> to look forward to. to look forward I heard that to. there's yeah. prom, too. I heard there's, like, nerd prom. 
something called Nerd Prom. Yeah, they, Comic -Con. There's, there's isn't that one day in the hall? Yeah. There's a awesome. party that they call awesome. that. That's really cool. Yeah. I can't believe I haven't been invited. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Now it brings back this all year? those terrible yeah. memories from high school. Like, great, I didn't get invited to that prom either. Is it party? It might be, it better not be because he's my boss. Yeah, and he I hasn't know that's why. Well, that's maybe it was not. Maybe it's not him. <laughs> who showed up when you did your PaceyCon thing? Who showed up? Yeah, like who were were you know they all Dawson's Creek fans or were they? Oh no, uh, that I mean, you had your own con. I, wow. I I sort of like what would you call it? I photo bombed Comic Con one year <laughs> as Pacey. <Yes. laughs> awesome. But to see Comic Con fans try to like put together the, a Dawson's Creek character in Comic-Con, that's one place that they don't know. Any, like people are just like, who are you? What is this music? Stop it. <laughs> Cheryl Cole Yeah, no popular. Wookie, no love. Um, yeah, so that the, uh, I don't think anybody showed up, but they were definitely confused by what the fuck was going on. I did get arrested, which is always the high water mark for really? me. Really? Trying to bust into Comic-Con, the security guard was I remember not that, yeah. Having. That was the big, that was the big news. Yeah. I remember showing up, it was like, you got arrested. I'm yeah. like, what did you get busted for? I'm like, I'll bail him out. Yeah. Down you to just like, tried to sh get into Hall yeah, H or something? To, I let myself in and they took me down to, they have a, they have a fake jail. They have a jail. <laughs> Was fake the, the characters. Dick Tracy's down there. What's, what's <laughs> fake about it? Yeah. Well, because they're not, they're rented cops, not real cops. So they can't really arrest you, but they just sort of like detain you and sequester you from the rest of the comic. I can't believe this is just coming up. I feel like, <laughs> and who, like what other <laughs> kind of people were there? In jail. There was nobody in jail. Oh, okay. Come on. In a place Wonder Woman where you're allowed to carry swords and be in spandex. There really is not much you can do, apparently, you hate other spandex. than. That's twice that's come up. There's, you come, don't lie. You've seen some bad spandex there. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. People with bags bigger than them is oh, a big thing. Yes. And then spandex in places it should never go. Yeah. So you obviously are on this heavily serialized genre show, and, and, and as are many of you, as you think about sort of what's next, is, is this a world you want to go back into? Or are you sort of, you had your fill, you've done your, your years of, of Comic-Con and, and, and this kind of intense audience? Uh, I mean, I think once the story of Fringe is done, Fringe itself will be over. Mm -hmm. But the thing, you know, you're, you'll experience this more next year. The, the, truly the coolest part of the entire experience, at least for me, is that because that audience is so passionate and intense, and the people who bother to show up and wait all those hours to be at the panels, it's a really rare thing for an actor to be able to interact with the people who are, you know, taking in whatever the performance is, be it a TV show or a film, at the time that it's happening. Normally our job is done, and then if there's any response or feedback, you see sort of afterwards as people take it into their lives or digest it however they do. But when you're actually on these shows and you go back to Comic-Con, as the thing is happening, like you said, it's, sort of, it's quite invigorating mm -hmm. to see how intense the people who self-select for that show, uh, how much it means to them and how deeply they're willing to spend time thinking and, and uh, sort of absorbing the, those shows. So for that, I would happily do that. I mean, it's, it, that part of the Comic-Con and sci-fi, uh, I don't know, world has actually been incredibly rewarding. It's, it's a really rich experience. Would you do another genre show? Yeah, I th yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. I think, I don't mean we're all actors here, but I don't know any actor who would ever say, uh, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I would never work in that X, Y, or Z ever again. But it come, I mean, there, there are risks, I mean, there, there are certainly advantages and disadvantages, and I think having knives enter your house probably falls <laughs> well, in the category of disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or perhaps. The knives. Yeah. But you mean like. They were nice knives. You mean like being typecast? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was thought that the whole notion of being typecast was a little bit ridiculous because to get typecast, you have to work. Yeah, a bunch, <laughs> yeah. which is the goal. Yeah. Like that's our goal. Oh, you're, oh, you're typecast. Yeah, great. Uh, that means that you've been successful, uh -huh. yeah. right? You you don't get typecast by being bad at something. Uh -huh. You get typecast because you mean, do it and you do let's well. Let's be real here. I mean, we have a guy sitting here who who is kind of one of the gods in these halls, and it didn't slow you down at all. From you know, I I, I agree with you. Like, if you're working, it's not typecasting, but also good for anybody for ma for creating a character or being a part of a show or a film that creates a character that leaves a mark. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you're bad and you can't do anything else, then maybe you should be so lucky as to be typecast. Mm -hmm. But if you're good and you keep on changing and growing, then good for you. <laughs> exactly right. Is there a clear hierarchy down there? I mean, y yes. Uh, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> you can be modest, but oh, hell yes. No, I, I was really fortunate. I mean, I, I came into a, gr a great show and a great opportunity with, with Joss. And you know what? I think at that time, you know, really was just for me 
just wanting to work, you know, and, and being successful was just the hard work that we put into the show and then getting your own spinoff series and trying to make that happen and, you know, the ups and the downs of it. And for me, it was really just all about doing the work, you know, and, and you, obviously you go to Comic-Con and people are so infatuated with your character because it's an ethereal character. It's very, it's, the guy doesn't age, he's a vampire and he can give you, you know, eternal love for forever. I mean, look at the, the vampire shows today that have just exploded. I mean, from True Blood to, you know, the Twilight series. I mean, it's massive. Yeah. And we were kind of doing that in 99, but before that, there were other people doing it. So, um, I mean, for me, it was always about just having a good time and working and, you know, and opening other doors in order to meet other showrunners to do a show like Bones. and. And to, to, to play a character like Booth, who is extremely different than a guy who doesn't fly around or doesn't you know, <laughs> burn up when he goes out in the sun. So, I mean, for me, it, it's always been just really about working, having fun. And, and um, I never really believed in the typecasting thing. I mean, I think it's just really, you're working, you know? And yeah. um, people will always remember me for that character. It was a great character. It was a great moment. I was very fortunate. And, you know, I, I, I embrace that. It's something I embrace. Do you guys have an idea, or do you have a uh, preference for how your show ends? Oh, uh, wow. Um, I do. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> think... Free to... Well, I mean, I think everybody wants to see Booth and Brennan together. I mean, now she's on the run now. So, I mean, I think, for me, it would be great to just... I mean, I always love the Poltergeist ending, where they, he just put the TV out and closed the door. <laughs> It'd be great to see the two of us in a motel and just close the door in the middle of nowhere and just put the Do Not Disturb sign on. And that would be the end of the series. Who That'd knows cool. what really yeah. would happen? And that would probably not happen on Fringe. So, what uh, <laughs> would you, do you know? Do you have an idea of what you, how you'd like to see it end? I do. My show being what it is, I can't <laughs> tell you. Uh, but we have a we the, because this is our last season. We have a really distinct, what I hope people will think is a cool, but I think is a very cool. Uh, wrapping up of the entire series. So you've been told how yeah. it's going to end. This year, the uh, Joel Wyman, who's our executive producer, has been. Uh, kind of shockingly forthcoming mm -hmm. because our show That's is nice. pretty that impenetrable usually but this is the last year he's like I guess it's a new leaf he just wants he was like I want everybody engaged I want everybody to know exactly what they're doing it's a really because we're only doing 13 episodes it's a the story itself is really finite so there's sort of you know you're gonna start here then you go there then you go here and then we're done so he brought everybody in and and uh, so I have a really good idea, I think, of well, where the show's going. You're not leaving this room until. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is yeah. Going back to jail. Is there and? UFO involved? <laughs> yeah. uh, there's lots. It's lots. It's big. It's big, and then it's sort of, you know, in the in the way, because there's no good way ever to end the show, because you're not necessarily going to piss somebody off. Because part of what's fun about a television show is that people get to fill in the gaps for themselves of where, who these characters are and the stories that we don't get to see. But once you come to an ending, you sort of tell them where everybody, where your, those characters finish up. That being said, I think you know, it's a big, massive sci-fi set piece, the ending, but with a really important and sort of finale-esque emotional center to it. I sound like a producer now, but it is true. It's, Did you get to weigh in on uh, Yeah, he, on like it? I said, he's been incredibly forthcoming, but also open. I, I think all the actors, you, you live with these characters for so long, we all have our ideas of who we want these people to be or you know, where we'd like to see them end up. And you know, I think, I, not just for myself, I think for everybody, he was more than willing this year to listen just for ideas to sort of glean where everybody is and where they want the, the characters to finish up. Because we know it's a really unusual thing to know going into the last year. Mm -hmm. so, th so there's no more, you don't have to leave any doors open, you don't have to leave this, this is it, that's the end. And it's actually, it's really very freeing. Do you have ideas about how Dexter should end? I do, but I don't want to say them because I have a, a infinitesimal hope that maybe it'll happen that way. <laughs> it would require that my character lives. <laughs> so we'll see. One other thing, just about you know a new like you guys have new shows just one season and, and fresh on the air and you're coming on in this fall. I mean, when you guys are are launching a show, do you think about the audience like who who you think the audience is for your show, and then do you does it always match? The question is like, do you you know when you have a new show, do you say this is the kind of person who's going to like this show? And in your experience, has it always matched that? I don't know because I've been a sophomore on all, a lot of the shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, for Ally McBeal, I came in the second season, mm -hmm. and so they already kind of had an, an audience. Right. Um, 
a lot of women, I think, and a lot of it was, a, you know, at the time, it was a very intriguing show because they had a green screen of a, you know, dancing baby. I mean, if you look at it, the technology now, it's completely different, right. you know? And so it's kind of funny to think that um, that was such a huge thing. And now you, you watch it and be like, this is not a big deal. But at the time, it was, it was immense. I mean, Calista Flockhart was on the cover of Time magazine, and it was a very big feminist movement, right. you know? Her and I had our first kiss on, uh, you know, two women kissing on screen. It was a big deal, you know? Um, and then for, like, Dirty Sexy Money, I came in the second season um, also, and Cashmere Mafia was the first season, but then there was a writer's strike, so we only did, like, seven episodes. Um, but this would be interesting because there's a lot of history behind uh, Sherlock Holmes and Watson, and so I'm sure there's going to be a great deal of opinions about um, the fact that we're remaking it and we're, we're naming the characters Holmes and Watson and I'm playing a female Watson and, you know, what's the deal with that? And, you know, some people are going to be excited that we're turning it on its head and some people are going to be kind of shaking their heads like this is a bad idea. I mean, the thing is, when you go into anything, everyone has an opinion. And we did Charlie's Angels. Everyone's like, it's going to be a huge flop. It's a disaster. It's a big mistake. And, and all I could think about was, wow, this is amazing because they have cast an Asian person as one of the angels. And when I grew up, you know, it was the idea that it's all Caucasian. So that was, for me, like, who cares about anything else, you know? <laughs> um, and for me, this time, it's about um, that Watson is a female. And, and a lot of people who are of ethnic background are coming up to me and saying, it's so great that you're playing Watson and you're representing a big, you know, minority section of, of actors and people in the world. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, if you look at people, if you look at children, they're all mixed. Like, you, there's never just a child that look. oh, that's clearly an Irish child with red <laughs> hair. Or, you know, they're all mixed. They look like half this and half that. So I think eventually it's going to be a moot point, but right now it is still something that's quite highlighted and specific. Mm. Um, but I don't know in terms of audience. I'm always surprised. Um, I'm also surprised that when Kill Bill came out, there were children running up and saying, oh, I loved you in Kill Bill. I'm like, oh my god, it's too violent for you to be seen. Like, how old are you? It's like, I'm eight and nine. I thought, Where that's incredible. Parents? But yeah, and the parents were like, he's a huge fan. I'm like, you shouldn't be watching this. But now, I mean, everything is... Respect my baby. <laughs> respect my baby. Um, is, is available on the internet. I mean, pornography, all of these things. Like, children are growing up fast. And at the time, I think... There was a big story about, you know, about Clinton and the cigar and Monica Lewinsky and, like, people were, children were being exposed to things that they shouldn't have been exposed to. Now, you can't stop that information. That was a big deal then, but now you, you want to block your children from having that accessibility on the Internet. But then they have phones because they go to school and if there's an emergency or whatever, they, they can do whatever they want, you know. Mm -hmm. And so kids are growing up much faster now. So you just don't know who's going to be. Yet we're at a 10 o'clock slot on a Thursday night, it's a coveted spot for sure, but it doesn't mean that that's, you know, it's that only older people are gonna watch it. I, mean, I think they want people that are interested in, in, in the show and gonna support it to watch it, but I don't know, like some shows that have an older crowd watching it, they're not interested, they just cancel it right away, yeah. you know? It's difficult. Do you feel pressure playing a comic book character? It sort of has its own fan base? No, the only pressure that I felt, I only felt pressure once during the pilot, because other than, I, I shot, 10 episodes of Hung, but this is the first, this was like the first lead that I've done. The only time that I ever felt pressure was when we did our hair and makeup tests. And it's sort of the, you know, first day of school for everybody, so you know, all the different departments come. And when we were pulling up to the studios in, in uh, just outside of BC, excuse me, just outside of Vancouver, I'm like, oh my God, look at all the cars. <laughs> I'm like, they're all, we're all here. I, I, the pilot won't get picked up if I do a bad job. And I was scared Aww. for like a minute and then it was okay. And then one of uh, one of uh, one of my co-stars, he he, you know, he said to me, he's like, you know, he lives in England, and he wanted his boys to relocate to Vancouver and have a different educational opportunity and see a different part of the world, and he wanted to move his family, and so I was thinking about that, and I felt a little bit of pressure there, but no, I I really really trusted uh, David Nutter, who directed the pilot, and. Andrew Kreisberg and Mark Guggenheim, they've been involved with um, the Green Arrow comic book character, and Jeff Johns was there. He's like the Don Draper of DC Comics, and he's, you know, he's <laughs> signing off on everything, and so, no, I trust those guys implicitly. What does that entail, like a, a consultant like that? What does he say? What are some of the things, oh, he would never do that, but yes, he would do that? No, he was mainly hanging around being like, this is so cool. You know what I mean? Like, we put a, we, we have a bunch of little Easter eggs in the, in the pilot, and, um, you know, on the, 
in the in the opening of it, we flash to a DC character called Deathstroke that has never I don't think it's ever been on television before. So just like it just flashed to his mask, which is like a big signature and he was just pumped. Like he's really excited. He's gonna write an episode and um, the, the whole thing was really collaborative. It was nice. No pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just excited to read episode two. That's how I think, uh, that's how I knew that, you know, I felt like we did a good job because when we finished, more than wanting the show to get picked up or anything like that, I just wanted to read the second episode. I wanted to see what's gonna happen, so. And I have to ask, David, you made a little news a, a couple of weeks back with, with your, uh, I'm going to be a free agent. Oh, um, oh to the Twitter people? Oh, to mm -hmm. the Twitter people, That's a yes. That's world, isn't it? Um, it is, but it, it moves into the non-Twitter people. Um, are you, I mean, is your plan to come back to the show next year if it gets picked up? What is, what is your plan? Well, I mean, I think, it, I'm, I'm such a sports fan, so I mean, in relativity, I mean, I'm like, listen, it really created a buzz. I mean, thinking about as, as an artist or an actor, you always have to keep all your options open. Mm -hmm. I think we all love what we do and we love the mm -hmm. work. Um, I think there also comes a time when we have to be responsible for our own, like where we would like to go next. and. Um, I think we have a voice that I think we can use Twitter in a responsible way. And whereas I like to poke fun a lot of times with the Twitter people and they just go bonkers. But I think that um, it's important for an actor to have a strong voice amongst the people of, you know, wh whoever you're working for, whether it's with a network or a studio, um, you know, you've fulfilled a contract. Mm -hmm. you've, you've been there, you've been on time, you've, you've done everything they've asked you to do. And there are a lot of, innuendos and small things that come along the way that you don't do for certain reasons. Um, you know, it's a card game sometimes. Um, would I love to come back to the show? Yes. I mean, I, I'm, I never said that I was not going to be coming back. I always said that the options are always open, which is the truth. So I think people take things and they twist them a bit out of context and they make it a little bit bigger than what it really is. But Sure, it was a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take Fox to find you after that tweet? They actually, they didn't. I mean, I, I think that they're just like, oh, Boreanaz is doing that again. I mean, look, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, they didn't say anything to me. I mean, um, I didn't say anything that was out of context or anything that crossed the line. So, you know, I was just having fun. With when you talk about sort of other roles, mm -hmm. is there a character or, or a show that each of you, if, if you could switch places with someone else acting on TV today, uh, who would it be in, in what role? <laughs> I always want to play the heavy in your show. Like my, my, I've always wanted to play villains. So it's kind of ironic that I'm doing the opposite of that. <laughs> but like, I want to play the, the crazy villain in Dexter, clearly. Nice. That's, yeah. You got one more year. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, man. It turns next out year? he's the one that sent you the knives. Oh, man. Really? Yeah, sorry. This, it was going to come up eventually. I sent you the knives to your... I don't know how I got your address, but yeah. Ginny, what about you? Um, I would love to take over Maggie Smith's role in Downton Abbey. Oh, my gosh. I was just going to say a role in Downton Abbey would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Everybody I love wants that to do that. I want to do it. I want to mm -hmm. be the, the... You want to be I, Maggie I Smith that. in yeah. Downton Abbey. <laughs> I tweeted that. I, like, I wanted to be the cowboy that comes and rescues the American show cowboy that causes problems. Nice. Great. Nice. I want to be a girl on Girls. Oh, that's a really um, good. When I'm done too. with this, I still like doing this. What is yeah. that? A girl. A girl. A gir oh, come on. Oh, that sounded bad when I. I know. <laughs> girls. I want to be one of the girls on the show, girls. Hey, now we know what the headline's going to be when they put I, this I, video I, I online. Like girl on girl. <laughs> I like the Adam character. I just want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah. The and the boyfriend, oh, my God. Douchey boyfriend. So good. <laughs> what about you, Josh? Uh, Do you want to be a girl on girl? I would like oh, to be yeah. girl on girl too. <laughs> 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 Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. I, mean, I would like to be on. No, um, I'd like to be on Breaking Bad actually. Yeah, mm. it's a great I show. love that show. Uh, so, but the, you know, the, it's an odd question because truthfully, I wouldn't want to replace anybody on any of the shows that I really like because yeah, I really like them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if I had my pick of shows to work on, it would certainly be on Breaking Bad, even though I can't. Are you sticking with Downton Abbey? No, I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't. I agree with what you're saying. I think that everyone's cast for specific reasons, and they create a character. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to step in anybody else's shoes because they've created such a great character, and it's part of the story. I think for me, it's something new and that's character driven. I always thought that I think characters are more interesting than sometimes than the plot. I think with Bones, it always has been for us from the beginning since we shot the pilot. It was about the relationship. And about the characters and not about 
the the drama or the yeah. body the and, you know like let's turn it into the next x files it's like what well, we didn't want to do that we we really put ourselves up there and said we continue to do character work with it and to me it's really about i, I w- would want to do something new and something interesting i i i, I wouldn't want to replace anybody you know i think that it's, it's just, just fun yeah. <laughs> we would never take maggie smith yeah. out really but <laughs> yeah She's so amazing. next fall on we fox uh, uh, uh vampire show. fbi yeah. Yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> free aging guy. It's totally new. Yeah. It's a whole sports show. He's a it's free a agent show. vampire a, yeah. FBI agent. It's something you haven't ever done before. <laughs> what's the part that, that, if you look back, what's the part that got away? The part you wished you had either tried out, f- auditioned for, read for, taken? Oh, my Lord. That's a, very There's, long list. That's a book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's but a book in a weird those. way, they never get away because you end up where you are, and yeah. hopefully you like where you sure. are. Sure. And for four minutes or whatever, however long it takes you to audition, mm-hmm. it is yours. So I never mm-hmm. feel like I lost one. I just no, feel like... but perhaps you you didn't read. I mean, the, your name, oh. your names. You all have names that are thrown around for the, these projects regularly. Um, really? What have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know about those too. <laughs> really? What studio are you talking to? <laughs> is there a part you guys wish you had? Uh, Oh my lord! I move forward with. I have. I. I mean, I really do have a long list, but it's while while I know that I did not see things in certain roles that other actresses saw in those roles, and those roles clearly did very good things for those actresses. Mm-hmm. And that part, I've I've regretted um, not making certain choices based on opportunities that were then further made available for the actresses who took the parts. But at the same time, I've had to always check in with myself and say, but I didn't see the potential there. I, I didn't see right. how rich those characters would be, meaning I would have sucked ass. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I could not have gotten where those actresses, you know, have gone with those roles because I didn't see it. Yeah. Mm. In much the same way that you wouldn't want to replace somebody, you know, you wouldn't actually want to replace Maggie Smith because... Right, exactly. She, it's... The only ones that really bother me are the roles where I see somebody be not very good, and I go, I could be just as not good as that guy. <laughs> like, hmm. There was, yeah, I got really close on uh, Spartacus, and I, mit- I was upset that I didn't get that only because it just would have been so cool, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're watching it. And also, the other unfortunate thing is, once you get that close, I can't watch the show and enjoy it anymore. Yeah. So it's like, uh-huh. I'm denied the opportunity to watch a show that I really enjoy, because I just, you, you watch it for a second. Just think about like, what your diet would have been. Uh, yeah. Exactly your, what it is right now. Your carbon intake, right? It's got to be really low. Oh, man. But is that the same for all of you? Can you watch things that you didn't get? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, I mean, truly, you... I don't know about everybody else's batting average, but if you get two out of every ten jobs, you're oh, doing, yeah, you're doing really well. Yeah. Doing so great. if you couldn't watch things that you didn't get, you would... Have nothing to watch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Uh, I'll eventually fire through Spartacus you know, on DVD one day. <laughs> even if there is something like... Even, even, even if you, someone got a part or that you had coveted for a moment or something and you felt like you had missed something, you can still steal it. You can still steal the thing that you missed. It's right, always right, a learning. Right. Who, right, who right. cares if you got I the like part that. and you learned it on set, you I learn like it that. after the fact. Yeah. And if it opens up your thinking, you still didn't lose the part. Mm-hmm. That's you know awesome. I mean? yeah. yeah, it's a really you know, unusually you know, uh, healthy <laughs> way of <laughs> thinking right. about things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I usually, but I usually, usually I, for me, this is uh, depression and alcoholism. <laughs> I like your way better. I told my therapist recently <laughs> I don't drink enough. I need to try to drink more. <laughs> I usually I usually book a job after a terrible audition. Like this, usually, like a, I, I have a, I have an awful one, and I just go, oh, this is stupid. What am I doing? Well, you stop trying so then hard. Then you refocus, yeah. and then you go. You just yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm sure we've all had this experience where you walk out of a room, and you're like, well, that sucked. I'm never going to hear from those people again. They might not even ever bring me in. And then yeah. ten minutes later, it's like, you congratulations, sure. you got the job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I auditioned for Dawson's Creek, one of the guys in the audition fell asleep. Oh man. At the wow. studio level, literally, like I'm in the middle of reading, and this guy's like. <laughs> Like, okay, well, clearly I'm not getting this job. Yeah, like actually nodded out and started snoring in the middle of the audition. Maybe had a great dream. Yeah. <laughs> he woke up and you were there. I love it. It's great. You're a beautiful kid. You're wonderful. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So Anyone else have any know. stories? Well, I mean, perhaps not falling asleep, but any Auditioning other audition? Yeah. Uh, oh, every horror. test, every <laughs> studio horror. test, I packed cooler. 
I pack food. I pack like <laughs> again no, with the life like, coaching. Really? Like, you are hired. Yeah. So when the competition like, sits down, I'm Brangles? like, do you want anything? Is your blood sugar low? <laughs> like I feel like no. I'm co I'm collecting good karma. I'm my my Secretly, blood sugar is not going to. Well, so you come into the door with a cooler? Yeah, I like no, because they're going to keep you that. waiting forever what and ever. <laughs> I don't know. It just keeps it interesting. That's that's, that's my so much nicer trick. than people usually are in those things, oh, particularly man. girls. Girls are rough on each other, man. They right. are. All the, whether you're an actor or not, poor girls. I, I've been told, and this breaks my heart. I've been told that I am not a pleasant person to audition with. Where, whereas, I've auditioned with you. Well, and, and this is probably why I honestly don't remember it, is because I put yeah. on headphones. I could have told you that. And I go, because I'm A, terrified. Right. B, I don't want to affect anyone else. C, I don't want anyone else affecting me. And so I like seriously go into like a, I don't know, like I hermit inside my, myself. I don't know who I'm sitting in rooms with, and I mean, pe because people oh, yeah. do visiting, do visit, too. but I, I hear girls throwing each other. I just oh, never yeah. want to be a part of that kind no, of I... thing. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is be courteous and keep myself focused, but apparently I'm, off as a I'm <laughs> really, <laughs> it's really unpleasant because I seem so cold. But I never would have said that, I oh, having, uh, having an audition with you. Oh, I'm glad mm -hmm. to hear that. There's, there's a guy on your show that I worked with way back in the Dawson's Creek days mm -hmm. named Ian Bailey. Oh, yeah. Who because we're the same age, we audition for a lot of things together over the course of the years. And I consider him a friend and he's a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. So after, I don't know, like 10 or 15 auditions over the course of years, finally I walk into a room and he looks at me and he goes, just, just talk to me afterwards. <laughs> he's like, you're so distracting. <laughs> I just, because I go the opposite way when I get nervous. I'm like, hey, and I want to talk and get all the nerves right. out. And he's like, I just, I can't even, I can't deal with you right now. Just talk Aww. to me afterwards. <laughs> well, you're good friends, so you can say that yeah. and he'll be, and yeah, you'll, no, you'll I, laugh. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, it was funny. So I went and ruined somebody else's day. Oh <laughs> For what it's worth, yes. seeing you at that audition with your... I have oh, yeah. iPhone oh, and you're sitting in your car for quite a long time. Oh, you know, yeah. right. um, it was nothing but respect. Oh, like, good. It, did you, did yeah. you have a cooler back then when you were with her? <laughs> it wasn't a studio. Her, like, uh, it wasn't oh, a studio. Oh, okay. That's only that's for hilarious. studio tests. I, I've never heard of that. You yeah. actually come in with a cooler. Yeah. But I'm for all the people that are watching you. No, no, no. It's just for, it's for I come in with a cooler because I know they're going to keep me waiting for Ever. So when you go in the room, though, you leave the cooler outside. I leave the cooler, outside, the, I leave the cooler right, outside. Okay, I thought you left. I thought you brought the whole cooler I mean, in. And, like, I you sit on. It. That's what I thought. I'm like, all right, I would love that. Actually, it's, it shows great confidence. You're like, I'm gonna be here for a while. So if you oh, need no, a snack. No, 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 I'm just. No. I've been kept waiting. That's I, what it's really me. about. I I've been kept waiting uh, long enough for somebody to fall asleep in my audition, so oh, yeah. I know all about it. I had a horrific commercial audition when I first came out, and it was for Double Mint Gum. You know, they show you the whole. They basically show you how to load a piece of gum in your mouth. <laughs> you have to watch this video for like 10 minutes and they show you how to put the no. piece of gum. It's like it a stick. Because it has to fold or make Yeah, it it's like a fold. Right? So they, you have to wash it and sign in. And then you have to pair up with people. Well, at the time I went in for the audition, I just got over this like horrible breakup with this girl I <laughs> who I really no, liked. I like I was like was just done. I was like, I couldn't eat a banana. I couldn't, I was just like, I was in love, I got totally destroyed, and like, I go in, and lo and behold, Naturally. who walks in the door no. for the double mate? Your ex? My ex. And right. she's like, hey, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like dying inside, you know? You just totally just like, diss me, right? Flops. So now I'm like, she's like, okay, you gotta pair up. Would you like to pair up with me? And they have to be like two people who put the gum in their mouth and no. kiss afterwards. Oh, no. So I'm like, that's sadistic. I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> So now we go into the room, and not only can I not get the piece of gum out of the wrapper, I'm like shaking. Of course you and are. And then I had to kiss her, and I, like, I hit the cheek with the gum. It was a complete <laughs> disaster. And, and she, she was like, oh my God. See, this like, is why really? we're together. Like she was like, I, I always book these spots, and I'm like, I'm standing there with like a broken piece of double mint gum, and yeah, she's like, like, just no burn. <laughs> A trail behind me. It was pretty rough. And did you get it? No, I couldn't put the gum in my mouth. You had to like, you had to like put the load the gum a certain way with the video, and then you had to like say something to her and give her a kiss. Well, I was like, Ugh. it was a mess. Terrible. That's brutal. Yeah, it was rough. Terrible. But it, it, it built character. <laughs> and now you have the story. And now I have the story. And you didn't need the commercial. 
Yeah, I would girl. love to. Or you clearly yeah. didn't. Let's be clear. You clearly didn't. Yeah, you I never. I can't. Eat, like, I can't eat double mint gum the same these days. I always look at it. I can't. I can't do it. Oh. Jenny, I have it down here that they call you the admiral on set. Oh, that's so funny. What is that? Um, I'm supposed to ask of what army? Oh, of, of the... What navy? Of the, the, navy. Of the fun army. Yes. <laughs> because um, I really rather like a field trip. Is, that's, why they, that's why they call me the admiral. Because I'm big on... Um, I'm big on organizing um, large groups of people yes, to, go, <laughs> to go to events. I don't mean events like Hollywood events. I mean like Disneyland. Oh. Or yeah, the concerts and things like. Oh that. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm like the tic- like I'm like no. I just bought like a lot of concert tickets and like if like I will do anything I can to like keep people. Got a cooler. Yeah, yeah right. right. We, we right. should team up. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in. yeah, yeah. Or like a museum exhibit, or to play at the science center, or yeah. That's fun. You're like the social like, planner for the. I set. like. I'm the social planner. Yeah. Hmm. That stuff's mm-hmm. important though. I like that stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. also I think I, I try to make up for the fact that like. I'm also really, really dorky. Well, as has been made clear by the list of like <laughs> field trips that I've taken in the past couple of months, um, and so I, it is less likely that you'll find me like dancing at night or you know out partying in any real way because I'm probably going to go to bed early. So I like to try to make up for that, compensate for that by uh, organizing field trips. And I think they just humor me by calling me the Admiral <laughs> of the Fun Army. They are really just trying to make me feel better about my nerdy sort of inclinations. You said that was important. What, what, I mean, what other fun things do you guys do on set to sort of liven it up? Well, uh, we were shooting the pilot. We did a pub crawl. We had, like, oh, cast and crew. We went around Gastown, did a big pub crawl. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> part of me. Oh, yeah, no, actually, you know what? <clears throat> it was after our only night shoot. Okay. So it's like we, I, we worked until 7 a.m. I slept until 2, and then the pub crawl started around 3. Hmm. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I feel like the, I feel like that stuff's in, I feel like that stuff's important. Your you diet's know? not that strict. No, no. It was, it was near the end. It was near the end of the. Uh, I, I couldn't have. No, nah, I'm mostly in church on the weekends. Um, yeah, yeah. In fact, that was you, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I've done a little bit of drinking on the weekends, but it is important to get the cast and crew together. You mm-hmm. spend so many hours yep. working together yeah. that, that I think a lot of the times the inclination for everybody, actually, I've never shot in LA, so I don't know how it is here, but I think the inclination for everybody is to just sort of poof. Yeah. Expand, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not big in the whole planning. Let's all hoo-ha together on yeah. the weekends. But I, but I mean, I, I enjoy so it, I enjoy the time, because it's, it's like your second family. I mean, yeah. you're really working such long hours yeah. that you can't, it's like, we do you do. want to go to the museum this weekend? I'm like, yeah. But really? you also have I'm kids. Love to, oh, well, also, I have a family and I have yeah. two children. But I remember Emily organized this thing the first season. We went to a, a, a really great restaurant, but it was a vegan restaurant, which, you know, <laughs> I, I support the cause. <laughs> I've, I do vegan weeks for her. Like, I'm all vegan for a Aww. week just to support her, you know, cause. And I think she, I'm really proud of her for what she stands for. But... And we all went out to dinner at some restaurant out in the valley, and it was great. I mean, they had like little vegan Big Macs. I mean, I, I, it was fun. Cool. You know, we all the cast got together, and we're you know. You went to Madeline's. That's where we went. Yeah, Madeline's. Yeah, it was great. It was a great those little spot. Sandwiches. But I think those, you know, I think early on, it's, it's it sets boundaries. But I think you become a family, so yeah. it's 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 a lot to mm-hmm. take on when you have any hours. You know. That's what we do. A softball team in the summer and the hockey football, team. Yeah. Fantasy football league, maybe. Well, fantasy, yeah. yeah fantasy but I just football. mean as a way to get people together. In the summer, we do. Actually, we're going to challenge you, I th- you guys. I think this yeah, summer. Yeah, we need to. We and need we should to challenge play. you guys. Yeah, hundred well. percent. We have like we're an in. archery team. Well, yeah. I would do that. We're archers. <laughs> We've got archers. I yeah, I love. Hey, of course, you have yeah, I'm, an, I'm an archer and. I really like. Do you like it? I like archery I, a lot. I love it. Everybody holds tension right here, and to properly draw a bow, you have to relax this. So I actually found that it's helpful for acting. Because you just well, sure. Yeah. Now wait. Speaking of, by the way, and I'm totally gonna take us all the way back to to what do you call legolosing? Legolosing. Legolosing. I found on my show since I'm the archer on my show, they I was properly trained. Yes. And then was asked on set to change my form because true form is not always incredibly flattering on film. So exactly right. I was asked to, for instance, pull oh, away exactly. from my bow, right? Yep. And because they didn't like, like for instance, by the way, Jennifer Lawrence has the most beautiful archery form I think I've ever oh, seen. I haven't that, seen the pilot. I haven't arrow. seen the, your pilot yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in Hunger Games, there's all those shots of her, like of her holding the, 
you know, holding it up yep. next to her, next to her nose, and that they did all these close-ups of her lips if you saw Hunger Games. Anyways, it's amazing. Um, and it's beautiful, and they, it really was bothering them on our show for me to hold it correctly, so I'm actually, so I kind of wonder if that, you know. People might be getting mad just, at you. Just in, the, biggest yeah. thing, the biggest thing is, is that um, a lot of times you're, you're drawing and knocking a, an arrow that's not there, yeah. obviously, for CGI. So the, the, the big thing is, is that when you Sense let it go, when you, pardon me, <laughs> yeah. when you let it go, you just are supposed to open your hand and release it. Yeah. And the thing that they get mad about is when people go like that when they release it. Oh, because sure. Because that's so, you would never do that if you were actually right. shooting a bone arrow. And that's, that, yeah, that, that was I the mistake. I just draw a gun, my friend. Me too. Want to talk about that? So you do the pool I can hold back. a 45 pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. With a flashlight? Yes, a flashlight? with a flashlight. Yeah, yeah you got that yeah, down, got right? That too, you know yeah. that whole yeah. system. Right? I hope I've got it right. How to come in, see yeah. people behind doors. How to load it. Yeah. What's, <laughs> what's the community like in Vancouver? Um, just, you know, do you, the shows that are shooting there, do you guys hang out? Is there inter... Intershoot uh, I hardly saw yeah. you, you at see all. Each and other. We, we've been friends for like years. You see each other hardly... a lot at the very beginning yeah. of the season, mm -hmm. and then not at all through the middle of the season yeah. as everybody wears Everybody's down, hours and then insane. a little bit again at the end. <laughs> and and everyone starts socializing again during pilot season when everyone yeah. starts showing up when at the, the new Slutton Hotel. Oh God, the Sutton place. That was mm -hmm. it was it was nuts, and there was there was. It becomes like a college campus. Yeah, the bar. Offers. The bar is just. The Girard. It, yeah, and the Girard. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then there was there was one night where I think four or five different shows, all pilots, um, were just all at the same bar mm -hmm. in Gastown. Mm -hmm. It was insane. We were playing pool against each other. Mm -hmm. I get super competitive. I haven't done any shows. In, I've been blessed to do all of the shows I've done have been in Los Angeles. That's also why you guys amazing. don't play on the weekends. Like, because when we're yeah. up there, there's only like, well, of course, you, know, you know, five of us who are on location we'll that permanently really, sort of up there, so it becomes... I just wish they shot more in America. I really do. I support the... Yeah. I mean, I wish, especially in Los Angeles, it's so ripe, and it's it's a shame that they don't have tax incentives and to go back oh, to producing shows. Oh, my gosh. No, I, I, yeah. It's a shame. Exactly, it really exactly is. right. It is. Exactly it's, right. It's, um, I mean, I'm happy. I, I think it's great for the people that are where they're shooting these shows, and even films, and they're shooting them in Bulgaria and stuff. I mean... I just think that we just need more jobs in America. I'm not going to get on a political standpoint right now. That's like the last thing I'm going to do. Yeah. I mean, I love Vancouver. I think it's great. I really do. I think it's a beautiful area, you know? And I, uh, Toronto, same way. I mean, you know, I, I worked in Canada for five years before I came down here, and I never even set foot in British Columbia, which, yeah. is, which was a, a mystery because that's where so much work is. And then, of course, I come down here, and I, now I'm moving back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't work in Vancouver. I worked, I worked in Toronto like what is something silly like eight or nine times in a row, and didn't work in Vancouver from '96 till Fringe. <laughs> well, Fringe started <laughs> out in New York. Which, it's a total. Were you upset and that, that was, it kind of moved? I was upset. What upset me about Fringe moving was our show, like so many shows in the first year, was kind of a disaster. Frankly, we were working crazy long hours, and in my opinion. We never, it, nobody behind the camera ever gets enough credit on a TV show. Mm -hmm. It's the same on a film, but it's really particularly on a TV show. If that crew isn't good, that show doesn't get made. And they, it's their efficiency that allows us, collectively, to have the opportunity to put something on camera. And we just broke that crew. And they, you know, we got picked up and they all got pink slips. So I just think that's not an honorable mm. thing. But the look too looked really great. The look, I mean, I mean from a from a creative right. standpoint as well. I, th I mean, I, Vancouver has been good, but I think New York was a more natural home for it. It was really, yeah, really sort of. Though, I mean, we were shooting New York for Boston, which is the stupidest thing in the world, like <laughs> That's most really funny. iconic skyline in the world, yeah. and we are always faced the opposite direction. Yeah, that's where <laughs> we're filming point. in New York. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be New York. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's uh, one of the reasons I chose to do the show because it was shooting in New York, which yeah. is where I live. So. A little jealous. I'm mm. not going to lie, a little jealous. You're almost done, so yeah. <laughs> you can be anywhere after Exactly. That. I'll be Mr. Watson. You can be Mr. Watson. Oh, you never know. Hey, you know what? You're a free agent. <laughs> exactly. I'm a free agent. Exactly. I think I'm that Twittering you should it up right now. Down right now, pal. <laughs> so you're going to go do Lucy's show, and yeah. I'm going to do Dexter. And yeah. yeah. It's going to be awesome. It's all worked out, actually. It's all working out. You guys had a little um, change in the showrunner this year. With, uh, we didn't have a little change in the showrunner. Show. We had a massive, yeah, it's been, as we have affectionately called it, a two-headed monster since the middle of the first season, and one of the guys didn't come back for the, for the last 13. So how has that changed things? Or, you know? Well, we have yet to see, because we're, we're just about to get into it. I do think, I mean, it changes a lot. 
Jeff Pinkner, who's the guy who didn't come back, is, is uh, you know, part of the creative DNA of the show. But because our show is ending, I think it's less, we'll see as we get into it, but I, I think it's less dire than it would be if the show was sort of ongoing. I, I think they, Jeff and Joel, had probably spoken quite a bit about where they thought the show was going to end up. So I think the, the blueprint was already there. And because it's those 13 episodes, it gives, they're just, there's a clear ending to the story this year. So I'm sure Jeff would, or Joel would like to have Jeff there to uh, share the workload, because uh, suddenly he's cranking out 13 by himself. But uh, I think we're going to be okay. How did you find out? He told me, Jeff he told, told me. Okay. It wasn't, I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things. We're talking about creative content of shows and why as actors you want to take a role, but there's a business side of our business as well. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't acrimonious with any of the actors on the show, but you know, he's a man, he has a family, he has a mortgage, and to take a pay cut was not something that he wanted to do, I think. So mm -hmm. fair enough. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one of those things, right? At a, at a certain point, you fulfilled your contract and you have to make a decision that's not necessarily just based upon the creative content of whatever it is that you're doing, because life is long. We had that on Angel, the second season, the thir I think it was the end of the third, they changed the showrunner. And it's tough, because it tough. you put a lot of time and, and confidence and trust in somebody who's running your show, and you share a lot of great ideas, and you really bond with the person, and then all of a sudden they're like gone, and yeah. you're like, wow, like it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a relationship that you have, and then it kind of shifts things up. But you make it work. When, when you guys have disputes on your shows, what is it usually about? Never happens. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you resolve disputes? Well, Emily and I just, uh, we, we'll show up, and if we're upset with each other, we tell each other right off the bat. It's, it's really <laughs> simple. It's really easy. We have high respect for each other. We work, we've worked with an acting coach on all the seasons for our show. Every weekend we break, the, I mean, we're very, we're very committed to it, and we just, look, we're upset with each other. I'm gonna tell you. You know what? You're bothering me right now. Just leave me alone. I, I can't the deal with you. Right you? About mm -hmm. what things you? Sh I don't know. It's it's it, it, it's it's tough to kind of recall because it all happens in the moment. Whatever that situation yeah, might also, be, I don't really know. I can't pinpoint. Oh, she was doing this. Yeah. I, all I know is how we resolve it. Is that she knows what I'm feeling at all times. I know what she's feeling, and then we always come back and resolve it and just laugh at each yeah. other. So. And these, you know, these relationships are just that. They're relationships, right? Yeah. So, a lot of the times, whatever it is in the moment, it's not actually all that important, or it's not even really what's annoying in the moment. It might be hour 16, in which case everything's annoying. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, you might not have got a good night's sleep. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. It might be the middle of year six, and you just don't want to hear that story again. So, you know, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I think it changes all the time. And, you, and I mean, that's actually about the healthiest version I've ever heard of it, because a lot of times things like that can sort of sit that's and fester and, yeah. and it can destroy shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I, I certainly have watched shows and I've had dynamics that were less healthy and it just poisons the well. You're there for so, so many hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big believer in uh, a lot of the performance happens in the moments in between. And if two people are sort of standing at odds with each other, in a way that isn't supported in the script, I think you can always feel that. I you think know? you can be good, but you can never be great. Yeah. When you're yeah. when you're in that sort of situation, because I've I've have seen like I've I've been on shows where I know the dynamics between two people aren't super healthy, and you 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 catch it just a little bit. Yeah, now you, totally you're looking agree. at it with a trained eye because you know what's yeah. going on behind the scenes, and so someone watching it on television might not catch it, but but you but they feel it. You, you know? feel it. Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. Of course you do. And I, I think, I mean, love my little pet acting theory here, but I think kissing and laughing are the two most honest things you do on camera. Mm. Uh, it's really, really hard to bullshit a laugh because you can just see it in a person's eyes. And, and, and that second before lips touch, if those people don't like each other, you know you it. Because there's that like, sure. ah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Lucy? Uh, do, you, do you think that the sort of um, onset dynamic is, is the viewers are able to tell? know that viewers are able to tell but I think as actors it's really awkward I think it also starts with the numbers like if number one isn't happy and it makes it hell for everyone else it's pretty clear that everyone else is tested suffer for it you know <laughs> and I think that's unfortunate I think that that if you are high up on the call sheet you have an absolute responsibility to keep your um, your drama and your criticism and your shit at home. Like nobody cares that you, you know, got stuck in traffic and you showed up two hours late for set or blah, 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 or, you know, like that's your problem, but you kept everyone else, like 150 other people waiting. And, 
you know, I just feel like for me, there has to be a certain amount of respect, and, and it's a profession, it's a business, and it's it's run like a tight ship. I mean, we get a call time, and if you if you know, for movies or for film, you know, and if you get a forced call, you come in at, you know, 8.58 a.m., you know? I mean, it's to the minute, you know? And and if, 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 there's, a, if there's a cog that's kind of off and not it's, it's not really kind of working right, um, and you try to grease it and, you know, put the WD-40 and it's still not working, it's, it affects the whole system. And the show might run for a long time, but it's, it's a misery to be in that situation. And it's, it's almost like it ages people in that situation. And, and I mean, for me, this is like a dream to be doing what I do. And I, I just feel like we have, it's a, there's a gratitude that you have to bring with you, no matter how exhausted you are. And if, if you want to take a moment, go to your trailer, you know what I mean? Like, take a moment. But, you know, people have stormed off the set and, like, left and went home and never came back. You know what I mean? And, and there's just, there's a, there are a, a lot of name other, names. there are a lot of other things that are, are, are happening, not just you. And so I think sometimes people forget, you know, that, you know, you're part of a team of people and even if you're like number one or two on the call sheet, you really do have to represent yep. that. And yeah. I think it makes it, a, it's a working experience. And as you guys said, it's a family. And that's why I love that you're, you know, you're gonna, do these things and collectively have people come. I think that's fun, you know. And if you can, just, if you decide to go or not, that's your choice. Sure. But it's just the having an option, and I, I love that because for me, like whoever I work with does become my family, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me, especially because my family was sort of like, "What are you doing? I'm confused. Like <laughs> this is a crazy decision that you're making." And I, I never, you know, forget that it's important to take, you know, keep my own personal life outside of of what my work working relationship is, you know. And to create a, a positive working environment. I mean, part of being, as you say, high up on the call sheet is more though, so than in a film, because then the sort of the director's job mostly to set mm -hmm. the tone, but the actors set the tone for what that set's going to be. Yep. And if you were working with an asshole, the whole set, like you it's said, bad. it just comes, it's it just bad. sucks. And the, the trickle down effect is incredible. Oh, like it's, it's fast it's, too. It's, yo, it's, it's really immediate. fast. In fact, it's much easier to destroy a set than it is to hold it together. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And it's also much harder to be a dick than it is to be a nice guy. <laughs> but like you have to work really hard. You have to keep going at it. But I gotta say, I'm impressed with the fortitude of some people because, man. I mean, God, I mean, it's like, you really need to Strong. And like, I just write on it. Yeah, totally. It's like, you know, it must be exhausting being that miserable so all the fucking time. It's like you're going to have some sort of. Well, this, this yeah. issue of ours. My grandmother says it's going to give you cancer. It's going to give you cancer. Yeah. Uh, this issue of ours has come up lately. There's some trouble on this Lifetime movie, Liz and Dick, with, with Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Have you read about this? Now, Where, are they really honestly going to call a show Liz and Dick? Yeah, they, no, it's, sure. a, it's a movie. No, I, I know. know, I know. Right, but, but, but really? Somewhere on a poster, I'm going to be watching Liz and Dick. Yeah. Well, there's always, wasn't there a Dick and Pete or something? Yeah, isn't there? It was no, <laughs> were, were none of these people <laughs> never right, teenage boys? Are you finishing it? The, the question so, is, yeah. are you are finishing Liz and Dick? Yeah. No, but they, are they finishing, they are finishing it? But there's been some controversy around it because of the hours yeah. that they supposedly have been working, which has okay. some people saying that that's caused some of the problems. We all work kind of insane hours, yeah. all of us. But, yeah. but that's, that's I mean, do, do you guys feel like those hours are fair? We're protected by... I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big union, Pro union. girl. Yeah, yeah. We are truly protected by yeah. our very good now one union, um, and and I think, without passing judgment on, uh, without expressing what judgment I'm passing in my head, on um, <laughs> what happens on other people's sets, I I think it, we all have a responsibility to. You know, if we are going to go into this, we need to be getting enough sleep and taking care of ourselves and showing up on time. And there's the hours we work are not inhuman. And if I mean they're hard, yes, but we've we've all chosen this because yeah, we have the we, best job on the on the we, planet. And we're Votes. we're clearly a grateful bunch and um, and also take our responsibility very seriously. And and I don't think we can ever blame the industry for. Uh, well, I'll, I'm going to take a counterpoint to that because okay. I because I think it seems like I mean I know you fairly well at this point. We've met, I know you. It seems like everybody here is like, you know, conscientious professionals. I actually do, and so I would never say, you can never leave a set, that's ridiculous. You can't show up late because the knock-on effect of that ruins a, a day. Yep. But the, I always think that it's a bit penny-wise and pound foolish. If you're burning your crew at 
like 14, 16 hours a day for seven, eight, nine months a, out of mm -hmm. the year, which is not to say that you, it's not your responsibility to show up and work, but I do think that you, it's a, just diminishing returns. People are burnt out. Oh, sure. And we, I certainly felt it in Dawson's Creek, I feel it in Fringe, the, you know, the most crucial shows of the year are the last three or four as you're finishing up your arc, and everybody's dead. But don't I you mean, feel, therefore, as an actor, the worst, th because our crews always work longer hours than we do, and frankly work so much harder than most of it. And I'm not saying that about you, because you are far more no, no, present on your it's show absolutely. than I am on mine. But like my crew works <coughs> harder than I will ever work, and so how dare I be too exhausted to show right. for work? But I also think, I, I totally agree with both points. I mean, I was, after working Monday to Thursday, Friday rolled around, I knew we were gonna work until Saturday morning, and I, I opted not to drive. I, I got a ride with the person who does my hair every day because when you're driving an hour to go to Long Beach and then you're working insane hours and then you're expected to get on the road and drive back, that's yeah, irresponsible. That's so at some point your producers have to say, oh, we owe you a ninth day to yeah. finish this Good schedule yeah. because or we care about you and what you say. The crew, like if we're going to work a 16 hour day into 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning, you can't ask those people mm -hmm. to drive home right. Right. and deal with their families. But like I mean, the situation he's talking about as an actor who's oh, yeah, not, no. yeah, Look, that's true. I, for not I've been doing this for yeah. 23 years. I've never missed a day's work. Mm -hmm. I can probably count on one hand at times other than maybe five or ten minutes I've been late. It, you just not, you just don't do that. I, I also, all the time, I think about, especially for Dexter, I think about the girl that I offered stuff from my cooler. Aww. About every time I get tired and I'm like, she'd do it, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. A million other people yeah. would come here and do it, so yes. get up and do it. Yeah. And you know what, to bring it all back to Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Sorry, not about Comic -Con. Sorry <laughs> but like, when you're out there and you're expensing yourself, when you are, when what you are offering is feels expensive emotionally, those are the people that it matters to. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. like, it's not for nothing, and like that's what yeah. Comic Con does. It reminds you that it's, yeah, someone's it's not watching. Into a vacuum. Someone's yeah. really, really watching. I mean, look, I, I've been really fortunate to be to direct and direct shows, and I, I really love directing. And it's a different shoe when you're there with the crew and you're directing, and the actor shows up. It's like, okay, they do their thing. It's like, you gotta break down their periods and their time frames. And as a director, you're, you're, everything falls on the director. Everything, doesn't matter if, if, if the actress or actor is late, it's your yeah. fault. It doesn't matter. You know, sure, you can be like, you know what, I wish this person would be more responsible, blah, 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 but you have to take that kind of heat. And I think that when you're working as a director and you have your crew behind you, you have to keep an upbeat person, yeah. a, a vibe about it. I mean, things are gonna happen, unfortunate things are gonna happen, but you still have to be positive. I mean, why are we gonna dwell on the negativity of somebody who overslept or is two hours late or, it, it's nonsense. Find something else to shoot and be creative with it and you know, work with the person rather than be so anti against it. I think in today's media, they just exemplify it too much and they put it out there for, for barbecue. But also, if you're a director and everything falls on you, Hire people that you know are going to yeah, show up. That's true. On time. Yeah. But you don't know what you, you mean. Well, obviously, you're also director, looking at your sort of your your hands are tied a little bit. Right. Because also, as as you know, you want to create a cool character. I mean, we're talking yeah. about a character that could be completely <laughs> out of their minds, and like they're that actor or actress has decided to cause problems per, because that's what the yeah character would do. So you have to kind of work with that. I mean, you never know what you're going to be thrown, and I think that you have to be quick with that and. Look, it's just, it's, there's things that happen that are unfortunate, things that happen, you just kind of work with it, you know? It's I think tough. the problem now as well is that the media is so pervasive and invasive and there is, there's no room for mistakes. And I think that if you, you know, go out for, uh, to buy a, you know, a watermelon or a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. you're just invaded. I mean, there's no, the invasion of it is, okay, I'm, I'm a public person, I get that, but this is crazy, especially if people have children, and I mean, there's a danger in it, and I think it also highlights how younger people who start in the business, um, who probably never had to, like, sit in a waiting room and have a cooler waiting by their feet, you know what I mean? Like, they somehow went straight into it, have gotten sort of infected with this idea that this is going to keep going and it's always going to keep flowing and they don't understand the struggle behind it and the the, gra the gratitude or the relief once you get to that point. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm finally working in something that I love and I'm making money. It's sort of they get, they get lost in it, with whether it's with drugs or with fame. Um, 
And it's sad when you start selling yourself that way and you lose perspective and no one is telling you any different. They just keep yeah. feeding you the same shit well, because also, they're making their commission or their paycheck yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, they just, their, their name is in the news. And, and now that is that whole Andy Warhol-esque yeah, um, and yeah, you can't buy that back. idea that there's everyone wants to be in a reality show and everyone wants to be famous like forget about being a doctor or having a real career it's all about like having that moment and then mm -hmm. <clears throat> writing a book and then god knows what but you also know? i you know i fear a generation of of i mean humans but for what we're talking about here actors who don't have an internal life or don't have a desire to have an internal life that's away from cameras that you know this is a job that we all do that allows us the opportunity to go do something pretty fun and fantastic actually but then like all jobs when it's done it should be done and that sort of you know the, the invasions of privacy that goes both mm -hmm. ways right both coming from the outside a sort of media interest mm -hmm. in this sort of cotton candy world where does anybody really give a shit if Lindsay Lohan, you know, fell asleep or didn't show up for it? Does that matter? No. It doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> so, but, and then she, of course, has, has fed that beast as well by inviting people into what we would all classify as your personal life. That, your, that other side, your, yeah. right? And once you sell that thing, you can't buy that back. There's yeah, you no, can't get your, that's not the integrity and your dignity, yeah. the respect that you have, like, is that what your legacy is going to be? That's not the legacy I choose, you know, yes, there are places that you, you can't avoid getting photographed at Comic Con, etc. That's yeah. the the point. But, that's but job. That's if you go to, if you if time. you go to the most <laughs> popular restaurant in town, you, you know you're going to get something that you you know that's that's expected. But if you're kind of you know doing your own thing and suddenly somebody jumps out of the fucking bushes <laughs> and says spank me, spank me. And on that note, spank we will end. Me. Thank you guys very much. Yes, thank you so much.